If you would like to be able to identify lots of plants, you're going to need a checklist of all the plants in your area. My name is Rick Murphy and I'm going to show you right now how to create a checklist of the plants in your state or county. Our goal is to make a checklist of 99% of all the vascular plants in our area. I try not to assume that a checklist is 100% complete. The vascular plants are the plants that move moisture and nutrients through their tissues and it's what people are usually interested in when they're studying land plants. But if you want to make a list of non-vascular plants like algae or mosses, you can use the same techniques. Our plants will be identified by scientific name, that's genus and species, and then grouped in other ranks like family, definitely, and maybe also class or order. So let's get started right now. Okay, we're just going to need a couple things here, a web browser, a text editor like Notepad, and a spreadsheet tool like OpenOffice or Excel. Let's bring up the web browser, and look at that, it just happens to be my website right there, texasnature.net. You can visit that later. But we're going to go to plants.usda.gov. That's a site that has a lot of information about plants, big database, and everything. On the left there is... Let's make this a little bigger here. Okay. On the left is Advanced Search. Click that link right there. All right. Now, what we're going to do is go down to State and Province and select your state in there. That's the second box there. I live in Texas, so we're going to go way down towards the end here. Whatever state you're in, select that. There's Texas right there. Click that. And as you scroll down, we're going to skip past most things. Notice on the right, there's uh, this display box. So even if you're not filtering on something, you can choose to display in the output. Let's go ahead and select family, just in a, as an example. And going down here, uh, we get down to subkingdom. Uh, USDA.gov is putting vascular plants in tracheobionta. So click that just to get that vascular plants. And scroll down here. Uh, select this box right here. It says download text file. We don't want to just display it. We want to download it and click display results. And there we go. That's it. That's the, the checklist of plants of Texas right there. Let's save that. I'm going to save it just to my desktop. Okay, that was easy. That was about as easy as it gets, right? And, and there it is, right there. That was easy. And if all you want is a checklist of the plants in your state, you're done. Now, remember that it's important to have a checklist that's as complete as possible. And a way you can put that to the test is by doing some searches and finding other sources that have uh, list plants in your area and see if you can find anything that's not already on your list. If it's not on your list, add it there. And if you can't find anything else, then you're done. Now we want to show how to create a checklist for a county. We're going to go back to the USDA site and do a similar search except for county. The thing is that this time it's not going to be a complete list of all the plants in the area, most likely. So we need to go to other sources and find more information and keep merging these until we can't get any more information. Now that sounds pretty simple in concept, you just keep adding things on the list if they're not already on there. But there's a catch. Even though every living thing should have a unique scientific name, these can change over time and maybe not everybody agrees. And so really, there could be synonyms. There could be other scientific names for the same thing. According to any particular expert, one of those is the correct name and the rest are all synonyms. So it's good to select a single resource that you will use to check on these so that you can normalize these all to accepted names and then eliminate any duplicates. Otherwise you may have two things with two different names and you don't know if they're really the same plant or not. There's a couple sources out there you can use. One is Encyclopedia of Life at eol.org, but I use what's called the Integrated Taxonomic Information System at itis.gov. I use this one because I like the interface and it's convenient for me to use. So I'm going to show you that right now. 
Let's bring our web browser back up again and go to itis.gov. Let's see what this thing's all about here. Let's make this a little bigger. Let's see, integrated taxonomic information system. There we go. A little easier to read. Okay, we're going to enter that scientific name of the flower that we know this name is a synonym. Click scientific name there. Click search. It comes up. And there's our match right there, the very first one, Aster lanceolatus, and then all the subspecies and everything. It says not accepted. Notice that you click it, and there you go. That's that's what accepted right there. That's the real name that we want. You click that, and and there it says accepted. And we have the whole hierarchy here. We see it's a green plant. It's a, a it's a, in a flowering plant. It's in the Asteraceae family. That's all our information that we know. So that, that's all it is right there. That's the ITIS. And that's what I wanted to show you. Okay, that was ITIS. And now we're going to go back into the USDA site. We're going to download a checklist for a county. We're going to do a similar thing on inaturalist.org, and we're going to merge these together. Once you have a list that has all these things, and there could be duplicates, you could look up every single one on a site like its.gov, but that's a lot of work. So I made a tool just for you. We're going to go to my website, texasnature.net, upload our list, and let that do all the work. It'll walk through all the things, look up each one, Make sure it's using the accepted name, change the name if it's a synonym, and also fill in the division and the class and order and family. Let's do that now. Okay, let's bring our web browser back up. And we are in the USDA.gov site again. Go back to advanced search. This should seem kind of familiar. We're going to select a state again, whatever state you're in. There's Texas right there. And this time also select a county. Keep in mind that this is probably not going to list all the plants in the county. It's just a starting point. There's Dallas right there. Okay. Not going to select anything extra to display. We just want the species. But down for sub -key kingdom, select Tracheobionta again. Okay. And down at the end, again, select the little box there, download text file, and click display results. And our results will be there shortly. There they are. And save that. Okay, I'm going to just save that to my desktop. All right, plants.csv. Simple comma separated values file. All right. There it is, right there. Now let's go into our spreadsheet tool. I'm using OpenOffice. You can use Excel or whatever you like. Google Docs online if you don't want to install any software. OK, just need to open our file. We just need to clean it up a little bit. Confirming the format there, it usually gets it right. And it'll be here shortly. There we go, those first columns, we don't need that. So just going to select these two columns and delete those two columns. And that first row, that's just the header. Don't need that, delete that. Click the Save button, keep the current format which is just plain text. Okay, there it is. There's our file right there. And if you go back into that with Notepad, you can see it's just a straight list. Notice there are varieties, and sometimes it just has the genus. That's the way USDA has given it to us. That's fine. Okay, now we need to go back to our browser, and this time we're going to inaturalist.org. This is a great website where people add observations. I'm going to sign in. I don't know that you have to sign in to get results, but I encourage you to make an account so that you can add observations later. Okay, click on observations, and then click on search. There's search right there. Okay, now uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select 
research grade right there, uh, that means at least one other person agrees with this observation. So you can select or not select, it's up to you. And then down here, because plants is a high level, there it is, plants, there's a box just for that. We could have also selected the taxon. And then for pl uh, place, I'm going to enter Dallas County. And uh, go figure, there's a lot of Dallas counties, but we want the one in Texas. And search. Okay, this is going to think for a minute. It's a little slow, but that's okay. And this is going to come up with some results. Keep in mind that you are probably going to need additional information from other sites. So this is an example of how to merge um, information from multiple sites and you will probably want to add more. Okay, so let's go down to the bottom. We've got our results here. There could be multiple observations of the same species. That's fine. When we merge these, we'll get rid of any duplicates. Right there, that's comma separate values. We want, we want that right there. Click that CSV link and uh, since it gives us this dialog, I'll go ahead and open this with Open Office. I could have saved it and then opened it there also, but I'm just gonna open it directly just because I can. And that's gonna come up. So you'll probably uh, search for other places where you can get lists of species and merge those in as well. I'm just showing a couple examples just to show the technique. Okay, so this is coming up. It'll be here shortly. Now, while we're staring at this gray screen, um, I know this is not going to have a huge amount of results, but it has a lot of columns. So rather than delete the extra columns, I'm just going to sweep out what we want and copy it directly from here. So there's what we have. The very first column is our scientific name. That's all we want. So I'm just going to copy that. Selecting there, I got the shift button and I'm using the down arrow and I'm selecting all of that. Okay. And since I'm on Windows, Control-C will copy that. Okay. That's all we need. All right, go back to the desktop, opening that file that we downloaded from USDA. I'm just going to paste it with Control-V right there, just pasting it. And you notice there's plantae. That just means a couple of observations. All we knew was plants. That was me actually entering those. I'm just going to delete that since that's not helpful. Okay. Uh, and there we go. So we just pasted those in on top. Now we need to merge these things together because some of these things are duplicates and some of them are synonyms. So let's go to texasnature.net. That's my site. And there's a tool I wrote just for this, just to help for this, make it easier. So right here in the second little paragraph, that read more, that goes to the help page. There's also a help link at the bottom of the web page that you could click. I'm just going to click that little read more. It goes to the help page. And oh, one of the help items is how to identify living things. Okay, it's buried down in there somewhere. And there's the first video and checklist. Okay, because this checklist is here. That's where we put the tool. In the description to this video, I'll put a direct link to this tool so you don't have to browse through there. There's Kingdom Plantae. Make sure that's selected and browse through our for our file that we just created, plants.csv, right there. <clears throat> Open that and click Submit. This will take some time. Please be patient. Please give it like at least 60 seconds. I think this is going to take more like 15. It's doing a lot. It's doing a lot of database reads. Uh, I went to a lot of effort to make it as fast as I possibly could, but still it takes some time. But it will be done very quickly here. There we go. All right, let's save that. Let's save that file and to the desktop or wherever you want. And I'll just give it a name like Dallas County Plants .csv. And there we go. We are done. Okay, except you would probably want to add more things before you merged them all together. Uh, but for now we're done. There it is right there. And let's Let's bring up Open Office again and take a look at this. <clears throat> what we're going to have along the top is the taxonomic ranks. Okay, I'm just going to open it here. Like division, 
class, order, family, and species. There we are. Open that. Let's correct for it. And the first thing you're going to see when it opens here is a list of everything it didn't find. And that happens. There's going to be some things that the that ITS.gov just doesn't see. There they are right there. Didn't find. There's not a huge list. I know it seems like there's a lot. There's not going to be a huge list. The first thing you want to do if you want to resolve these, and you can just delete it if you want, but if you want to resolve these, is see if that same gene, like some of these are varieties, see if that same genus and species is already below in the list. And you might see that in most cases it is. Um, okay, and there's the good stuff there. We got division, class, order, family, and then like genus and species or just genus, whatever that is. It's a common name there. Okay, and that's it. That's our checklist right there. You can sort it any way you like. Uh, if there's a column you don't that you find helpful, if you think order isn't very helpful for plants, you could delete it. Whatever you want to do here, you could add notes, whatever. And that's it. So that wasn't too hard. You can see that on the list, there's a number of things that are not found. One possibility is that ITS just simply doesn't know about a synonym. So you can take that name and you can plug it into your search engine and see if there's another name it goes by and then look that up and make that correction manually. If you go searching for a name though, check if the genus and species is already on this list because a lot of these are varieties or subspecies and it might be that the genus and species is already on that list, just not that particular variety or subspecies. I personally don't care that much about the subspecies and varieties when I identify something down to species. That's good enough for me. And if you like, you could just strip all that variety and subspecies information out and shorten that list a little bit. And if you think the tool should have done that for you, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know and maybe I will add that. The reason I put it in there is because sometimes a synonym and the accepted name are not at the same rank. For example, something could be a variety in the synonym, they decided to elevate that to species. So the accepted name is actually a species. Or it could be that there's a species and they decided to make that a variety or subspecies of something else. And so I left all that information in there just so that you could make a decision about whether you want that or not. I hope this was helpful. Leave a comment, like this video, subscribe, and have a good day.